So, when Columbus landed in the Western Hemisphere in 1492, he proved the world is round. No. Yeah, I know, but I wanted to start like that. I'm Indy Nidell. I'm Spartacus Olson. This is a Time Goes Short on the Myth of the Flat Earth. Educated people in Columbus time knew the Earth was round. The idea that they didn't is down to 19th century historians and what is maybe the most successful piece of fake news ever concocted. So what was the purpose of Columbus's voyage? Well, his mission, as funded by Ferdinand and Isabella, was to find a marine passage to Asia where a lot of spices and valuable goods came slowly over land from. Yeah, so right from the start, it was based on the premise that the world is round. Right. It was assumed that by sailing far enough westward on this sphere that we call Earth, Columbus should eventually reach the east. They just didn't know that the Americas were in the way. But where on Earth does this flat Earth nonsense come from? And how did Columbus get caught up in it? It's actually a relatively modern myth which dates back to the 19th century. It originates with people who wanted to portray the church as having always opposed scientific progress. In 1828, American author Washington Irving publishes a new biography on Columbus. Part of Irving's aim is to incorporate Columbus as a part of a foundational myth of a modern, rational America. In Irving's account of the build-up to his voyage, Columbus comes before the Council of Salamanca in 1491 to defend his Ideas. His ideas. The scholars and clergy sneer at the proposition that the world is round and that he can sail to the other side. Both the Psalms and the Epistle of St. Paul declare the heavens to extend over the earth like a tent, so how can it possibly be round? But the thing is, Irving's account is baloney. There is a meeting at Salamanca, yeah, and sure, there are disagreements, but those disagreements are over Columbus's erroneous method for measuring distance over the ocean. In no way is the shape of the Earth questioned. Right. Scholars have known for 2,000 years that the world is round, and medieval scholars had access to Pythagoras, Aristotle, Euclid, and Aristarchus, who all knew the world was round. In fact, as far back as 240 BC, Eratosthenes used the curvature of the Earth to accurately calculate its circumference. Medieval scholars also had access to newer Arabic studies. Arabic studies. Which, guess what, also tell us that the Earth is round. And that's the difference between studying the language and studying the culture. And no, the Catholic Church did not teach that the Earth was flat. While working on the proposition for his voyage, Columbus regularly consults his copy of Imago Mundi, or Image of the World, by Pierre Dali, a Roman Catholic cardinal and geographer whose work was based on the premise that the world is round. But the seeds planted by Irving will grow. The anti-clerical French historian Antoine Jean Le Tron picks up the baton in his 1834 book on the cosmographical ideas of the Church Fathers. He claims that until Columbus, astronomers were forced to agree to the flat earth or face persecution, prison, and the stake. Le Tron is Inspector General of the University of Paris and Chair of History at the Collège de France. So when he writes this, people believe him. The genius of this attack is that it builds on some solid foundations, right? There have been conflicts between religion and science in the past. Everyone knows that. When this boils over once more in the 1860s and 70s about Darwin's theory of evolution, the flat earth myth only gains more traction. The logic being that if the church denies science now, surely it has always denied science. The myth of the medieval flat earth will quickly become entrenched, trickling down from scholarship to mass education and into popular culture. Schools and universities will accept it as canon and reproduce it in textbooks and lectures, as a 1919 American school book simply states. When Columbus lived, people thought that the earth was flat. This will live on into the 21st century, as it is consistently reproduced in schools and the media. It is safe to say that this is one of the most successful pieces of fake news ever created, which continues to influence how we think about people of pre-modern worlds. Imagine that. Well, that's it for today, but keep watching Time Ghost every seven times that the world goes around. For more awesome content and join the Time Ghost army at timeghost.tv or patreon.com so we can keep chronicling ever more of what happened during earlier revolutions. See you next time. Excelsior!